Scolite, we have discussed in the last class, what is scolite? What is the difference between colloid and crystalloid? And what are the main properties of colloids? Now, we will, today we will discuss the optical properties of colloids. Colloidal solution. Colloidal solution means colloidal particles plus dispersion medium. Now today we will discuss the optical properties of colloids. The optical properties of colloid is called Tyndall effect. light when light actually colloid can disperse the light beam this property is called Tyndall effect ability of colloid to scatter light is called Tyndall effect Now a converging beam of light is passed through a colloidal solution kept in dark. The path of beam gets illuminated with a bluish light. This effect is called, this phenomenon is called Tyndall effect. The phenomenon is called Tyndall effect and the path is called Tyndall cone. Now look at this picture. This is a glass of water. And this is a glass of milk. So light being shined through the water and milk. The light is not reflected through water. When passing through the water because it is not colloid. It is however reflected in all direction when it passes through the milk which is colloidal. So the ability of colloid to scatter light is called Tyndall effect. The phenomenon of Tyndall effect is was first observed by scientist Tyndall in 1869. The Tyndall effect is due to the scattering of light by colloidal particles. Since the dimension of colloidal particles are comparable to the wavelength of UV and visible radiators, they scatter and the radiators and get illuminated. Tyndall observed that the zone of scattered light is much larger than the particle itself and this was this is why colloidal particles look like bright spots when it's viewed with a microscope at right angles to the beam of light and part of light travels path of light travels through colloid it's called Tyndall cone so look at this picture this is Tyndall observed that the zone of scattered light is much larger than the particle itself this is why Colloidal particles look like bright spots when viewed with a microscope. At right, this microscope is placed right angle uh, with the light source, and the colloidal particle looks like a bright spot due to this Tyndall cone formation. So, uh, this is why colloidal particles look like bright spots when viewed with microscope at right angles to the beam of light as shown in the figure. Thus, Tyndall effect may 
be defined as the scattering of light by colloidal particles present in the colloidal solution. Tinted effect is not exhibited by true solution. This is because <coughs> particles of true solution is too small to scatter. So the tinted effect is used for distinguishing between differences for differentiating between colloidal solution and true solution. So it is a difference between the true solution can't show tinted effect but colloid can show tinted effect. So thus tinted effect can be used to distinguish a colloidal solution from a true solution. The phenomenon of tinted effect has also been used to devise an instrument known as ultra microscope. The instrument is used for the detection of particles of colloidal dimension. So this effect is very important. It is the basis of devising a new instrument known as ultra microscope. Tinted effect also establishes the fact that colloidal systems are heterogeneous in nature. That means there is no solubility. The, the system is heterogeneous. So tinted effect is used for distinguishing between true solution and colloidal solution. Tinted effect is used for devising ultra microscope. Tinted effect is established the fact that colloidal systems are heterogeneous in nature. So the scattering of light is called ability of colloid to scatter light is called Tyndall effect. Now next property of colloid that is called Brownian movement. Original 
form or flora of Australia. The continuous zigzag movement of colloidal particles in dispersion medium in a colloidal solution is called Brownian movement. This is the picture of Brownian movement. So what is the reason, what is the cause behind this Brownian movement? Brownian movement is due to the unequal bombardment of the moving molecules of the dispersion medium on colloidal particles. The colloidal, the dispar colloid means dispersion medium and colloidal particles. Colloid. Colloidal particle, colloidal solution means colloidal particle, particles. Plus dispersion medium. So the unequal bombardment of the dispersion medium, particles of dispersion medium on colloidal particle is known as it is the cause behind Brownian movement. The moving molecules of the dispersion medium continuously attack on colloidal particles from all sides and impart move momentum on them. Since the chance of their collision are unequal, the date driving force on the on a colloidal particle forces it to move in a particular direction. As the particle moves in that direction, other particles of the medium again collide with it and the particle changes its direction. This causes a continue, this process is continuous and this result in a random zigzag movement of colloidal particles. So unequal movement is the bombardment of the this particles of dispersion medium with, with, with the colloidal particle is the cause of Brownian movement. The Brownian movement decreases with an increased size of colloidal particles. This is why suspensions not exhibit in the, this type of movement. Brownian movement plays an important role in imparting stability of the colloid. This is because Brownian movement opposes the gravitational force acting on colloidal particles and prevents them from getting settle down. So Brownian movement is one of the major cause for stability of the colloid and it is decreases with increasing size of the colloidal particles. Now next is electrical property of colloid. Colloidal particles 
resulting a different type of electrical charge, positive or negative charge. Different type of charge. In a particular colloidal solution, all the colloidal particles carry the same type of charge, while the dispersion medium has an equal but opposite charge. Thus, the charge on colloidal particle is balanced by that of the dispersion medium, and the colloidal solution as a whole is electrically neutral. So, as a whole, colloidal solution is electrically neutral. medium has equal and opposite charge. For that reason, colloidal solution is electrically neutral. So, example is in a ferric hydroxide salt, colloidal ferric hydroxide particle are positively charged, while the dispersion medium carries an equal and opposite negative charge. The stability of the colloidal solution is mainly due to the presence of particular type of charge on all the colloidal particles present in it. Due to, due to the presence of similar and equal charges, the colloidal particles repel one another and are thus unable to combine together to form larger particles. This keeps them dispersed in the medium and the colloidal solution remains stable. This is why soil particles do not settle down even on standing for a long time. So colloid particles have positive or negative charge and this is the this is one of the reasons that they are they <coughs> dispersed from one another and as a result of it colloid is very stable. Based on the nature of the charge, colloidal salt may be classified in positively charged colloid and negatively charged colloid. So colloidal solution, colloidal solution can be classified or colloidal particles, colloidal soil can be classified in two categories positively charged colloid and negatively charged colloid. The example of positive recharged colloids are metallic hydroxide salts, for example, ferric hydroxide, aluminium hydroxide, chromic hydroxide, etc. And negative recharged salts are like metal salts, for example, gold salt, silver salt, copper salt, arsenic sulfide salt, cadmium sulfide salt. These are negative recharged salts.
to absorb reactants or product molecules and the molecules that are absorbed on the surface of colloidal particles may undergo dissociation or ionization and may impart charge on them. Example, during the precipitate preparation of sulfide salt, for example, arsenic sulfide, H2S molecule get absorbed on the colloidal particles. H2S molecules does absorb and undergo ionization and release H plus ion in the medium. So, dispersion medium is positively charged and the salt is negatively charged. Consequently, colloidal particles are left with negative charge. Next is due to dissociation of molecules forming colloidal aggregates. The colloidal particles have tendency to preferentially absorb a particular type of ions from the solution. The colloidal particles usually absorb those ions which are in excess and are common to its own reactions. This preferential absorption of particular type of ions imparts a particular type of charge to the colloidal particles. So what are the reasons for colloidal charge on the colloids? Due to dissociation of absorbed molecular electrolytes, due to dissociation of molecules forming colloidal aggregates, due to preferential absorption of ions. Example, a ferric hydroxide colloid, always ferric ion is absorbed. Preferential absorption of ferric ions, the colloid acquires positive charge. So this is the ferric hydroxide colloidal picture and it absorbs ferric ion in this way. For that reason the colloid is positively charged. 
Now, sweet silver chloride absorbs chloride ion. The preferential absorption of chloride ions, the colloidal particles, enters negative charge. Preferential absorption of silver ion, the colloidal particles become positively charged. Now, next we will discuss another phenomenon regarding colloid. That is called electrophoresis.
and dispersion medium, the particles of dispersion medium has have equal and opposite charge. So electroosmosis is movement of dispersion medium. This 
called coagulation. Precipitation of colloidal solution and addition of electrolyte. is called coagulation. So the stability of salt means colloidal salt solution is due to the charge present on the colloidal particles because due to the same charge the colloidal particles disperse from one another. Due to the similar charge colloidal particles remain one another and are unable to combine together to form larger particles. However, if the charge on colloidal particles is destroyed, they are free to come nearer and grow in size. When the particles become sufficiently large, they get precipitated and this phenomenon is termed as coagulation or flaculation. The coagulation of the colloidal solution can be achieved by addition of an electrolyte. So precipitation of colloid is called coagulation. So look at this picture. So this is the negatively charged particles or in colloidal salt. And these negatively charged, part negatively charged particles actually impale one another. Now when positively charged coagulant or electrolyte is added. So negatively charged, positively charged coagulant attracts the negatively charged particles due to electricity. And then neutralization occurs and after neutrally charged particles they come together due to van der Waals force. And after that precipitation occurs. Particles and coagulations join together into flock. So it is, noted, it is to be noted that small amount of electrolyte is necessary for the stability of the colloid because the ions of the electrolyte get absorbed on the colloidal particles and impart them same charge. However, when an electrolyte is added in substantial amount, this positively charged ions of the electrolyte neutralize the charge of the colloidal particles and compel the salt to get coagulated. So small amount of electrolyte is necessary but large amount is not good. It is the cause of coagulation. Coagulation may be defined as the phenomenon involving the precipitation of a colloidal solution on addition of electrolyte. So the coagulation capacity of an electrolyte depends on the valency of the ion responsible for causing coagulation. As we have seen that the ion responsible for uh, causing coagulation is one which carries the charge opposite to the charge of the colloidal particles. For example, a positively charged salt gets coagulated by negatively charged electrolyte. Oh, and from, from the study of the coagulation behavior of various electrolytes, Hardy and Shinsun, two scientists, they suggested a general rule that is called hardy schultz rule. So what is hardy schultz rule? The rule can be stated as the traitor as the valence of the oppositely charged ions of the electrolyte added to the colloidal system the faster is the coagulation. So, hardy schultz rule is greater the charge charge of the oppositely charged ions
higher is the rate of coagulation. Colloids. So another important application 
institution of colitis, dialysis. So what is dialysis? Dialysis is the separation of colloid from dissolved ions or molecules of small dimensions or crystalloid in a solution. So separation of colloid from crystalloid is called dialysis. The technique is called dialysis. It is developed by in 1861 by chemist Thomas Bragg used the process of dialysis. The process used to separate colloidal particles from dissolved ions is by semi-permeable membrane. Because colloidal particles can't pass semi-permeable membrane, but crystalloid can pass. Dialysis is possible because of the unequal rates of diffusion through a semi-permeable membrane. Semi-permeable membrane is the membrane that lets some molecule to pass through. This is the picture of semi-permeable membrane. Pass through it while not letting others. Example of semi-permeable membrane is parchment paper or cellophane paper. So what happens in dialysis? When a colloidal mixture is placed in a semi-permeable membrane, which is then placed in a aqueous solution of pure water, the dissolved ions and small molecules are allowed to pass through this membrane. This causes colloidal particles to stay in the membrane because these particles are unable to pass through the small pores of the membrane. So what is the rate of dialysis? Dialysis is a very slow process. It is not a quick process. The rate of dialysis depends on the speed of the unequal diffusion rates between the crystalloids and the colloids and the differences in particle size. The rate of dialysis can be changed through the heating or, or if the crystalloids are charged, then applying electric film. That is called electrodialysis. So electrodialysis is the process which is used nowadays. So electrodialysis is a type of dialysis in which the electrodes are placed in the sides of the membrane. In this way, positive ions can pass through one side of this membrane while negative ions can pass through the other side of the membrane. This causes acceleration of the process of dialysis. Now, the example of dialysis in our world it is called hemodialysis. Hemodialysis is a method in which kidney failure is treated with the process of dialysis. In hemodialysis, blood is removed, purified through dialysis and returned to the bloodstream. In kidney failure, there is retention of different salts, water, urea and metabolic acids. The patient is then connected to a dialysis machine which is also called hemodialyzer. The blood flows through the small channels made of semi-permeable membranes. The dissolved substances like urea salts, these are crystalloids through the sterile solution and compounds like sugar and amino acids are added to the sterile solution. So differential diffusion occurs through semi-permeable membrane. The dialysis solution is on the other side of the membrane and the molecules flow through the membranes and the molecules diffuses from higher concentration to lower concentration area. The concentration of molecules needed to be removed from blood are zero in dialysis fluid. The process of hemodialysis helps many patients who have kidney failure because a person who suffers from kidney failure are at great risk. Because someone who has complete kidney failure will need a kidney transplantation within two weeks or else he or she will face death. Between the time that the person finds a suitable kidney to be transplanted, the hemodialyzer 